What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Librarians of Solana podcast. My name is T, and I am one of the librarians here in Solana in the world of Wraith. This week, I have stumbled across a gentleman, scholar, and famed magic player, Michael Conroe. Michael, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, the praise might be a little high, but I'll try to live up to that. <laughs> Three-time ProQuest champion. Three-peat in a row. I mean, that's that's a lot. <laughs> That's true. It's, uh, it's all with Prism. So I'm trying to join the uh, librarian crew, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. I mean, we're, we're gr glad to have you here. Glad to. Uh, we'll make an illusionist out of everybody yet. An illusionist player, yeah. <laughs> um, we got a little bit of news before we get into the meat of the pod. Uh, there's an announcement for a calling to be hosted in Taiwan. This is going to be April 22nd through 24th and is going to be Classic Constructed. Um, personally, I think it's great to see more events outside of the U.S. and New Zealand area. It's great for the game expansion, and that opens up the realm of possibility for a lot more players. So I love seeing all these new tournaments popping up that aren't just like nationals and events like RTNs. It's great to see these big callings happening in more places. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I think uh, Europe had one canceled, right? But they're getting some now, and... Uh... I mean, this region in particular, I don't know if you saw their nationals, but I was I was really impressed with some of the countries around here. Yeah, I, I love this game growth. The game is great, and I'm glad to see it kind of kind of take off, you know, and grow as much as it has been. We met a couple weekends ago at one of the pro quests. You actually knocked me out of top eight uh, whenever I was playing Oldham. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's a. Uh... That was coming off a nice IP for uh, writing Shimmers of Steel on my deck list, which is apparently not a flesh and blood card. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, Prism vs. Old Him is, I think, pretty wildly Prism favored. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, it's it's a little tough. Uh, I think the Oldham deck that I had that I had prepped and constructed was meant to be against the rest of the meta. It was quite favored, and then against Prism, it was like seventy thirty in Prism favor. You just have to have so much stuff line up, and if you can, then the matchup is like okay. But if you if you don't, then it's just not a game. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I mean, it looked like you had the full suite of go again, so like you'd set yourself up about as well as you can. But these days, it's not even about clearing spectral shields, right? Like they just play two auras and it kind of snowballs. Yeah, it's it's hard to, it's hard to come back once they've got a couple auras down. Um, but that was, that was last or two weekends ago. Then we have this past weekend where we met again on Sunday at comic Kung Fu and the finals, as you can see in this picture on the other part of my screen here, uh, was us. It was us playing in the finals and you had already won two events prior. You won that one two Sundays ago that we were just talking about with Oldham or where you played against me on Oldham. And then you won one uh, last Saturday too, right? Going before the uh, Comic Kung Fu. Yeah, the the day before I won, um, up in uh, Maryland somewhere. It's a token MTG. Nice. That's that's awesome. So you've got uh, you ended up beating me here in this in this matchup, but the the Pro Tour invite passes down because you've already won two events. So we're both going to the Pro Tour. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm. I'm super excited. That's I don't know, it's awesome. I am I am super excited as well. Uh it was really late by the time we got out of there on Sunday and we didn't end up getting home here in Roanoke until like 2 in the morning. So it didn't really set in for me until the next morning. I was like, "Wait a minute. Yeah, I really got the invite yesterday. Sick. We're going to the pro tour. That's awesome." <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. I mean, I think you were you said you were either close or were probably getting in on XP, right? But, I mean, just having the invite is amazing. Yeah. Uh, because of the event at Comic Kung Fu, I ended up, like, right now on the leaderboard, I'm in 95th for XP, which I still have two ProQuest events, and those are a really big multiplier. So even with me missing Indy, if I, like, break even on the last two ProQuests, then I I should lock hundred on that, but it doesn't matter now. I've got my invite through the pro quest, which is a lot more calming. Not having to worry about the stress of playing in those events and just having the invite for sure. 
I'm sure you feel you feel the same with not having to to stress out anytime you go to an event. You just have the invite already, so you're just playing for the for the gold cold, right? Yeah, it's uh, I just got a, the crushing weight of expectation now, so I think I have to switch off of Prism because you know, people's expectations have gotten too high after three in a row. <laughs> well, well, now you got to make it like four and five in a row, right? <laughs> so, so that's what I mean. Like um. At some point, you can't run that hot, and you're going to lose. So it might be time to blame Reinar or something. <laughs> blame Reinar. <laughs> this this sounds like some propaganda here. Where you, uh, Tommy Fresh is going to listen to this, and he's not going to be too happy with uh, with this anti brute propaganda. He was. I tweeted a, a picture of a trash can that I photoshopped an Arcanite skull cap, two mandible claws, and a scab skin leathers onto, and he was not happy about that one. I don't even know if I would have known that was photoshopped. That's just kind of what I see normally. <laughs> you just sit down. Yeah, my uh, my semifinals opponent at the at the Comet Kung Fu was on Reinar, and I was like, "Well, I just need you to not roll hot on scab skins." And uh, he rolled three sixes in a row, but I still got there. See, that's amazing. I I did beat a Reinar in that event on Prism, but. Uh... Yeah, I started the game with like two or three Genesis's in play because a Miraging got broken, so it wasn't... Two like, or three Genesis's? Oh my god, yeah. it's, it's all over! <laughs> it's everywhere! There's blood everywhere! What the heck? Yeah, it was like, I've had a couple of Genesis's, and then he blood rushed, I played Arclight Sentinel, and then he rolled a two re-rolled it into a one and like oh you know, the game's god. kind of immediately over that, right? yeah that one's just <laughs> over me oh my gosh he's like all right this two isn't good enough we got to get higher than that and then rolls worse than that oh my gosh that is that is tough yeah so uh you ended up taking me down in the finals uh do you want to tell the great people of the podcast what the gold cold that we were playing for in the end was yeah so it was the uh the courage of blade old so that's the the coolest one I've seen in person, at least. Um, yeah. I don't, sorry, I don't mean to rub it in. But it was, <laughs> I just, now, I've gotten pretty lucky. I got a Snapdragons also, so like none of the uh, the talismanic lens we were talking about. <laughs> no talismanic lens, no, uh, no first time seeing an iris of reality or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, definitely Courage, one of the better ones you can pull. It's, like you said, it's, it's the best one I've seen so far, unless you're... Uh, Unless you're a brute player, then you're looking out for that that gambler's gloves. Uh, our judge was talking about somebody had pulled maybe a gold blood sheath skelta, which would line up with with the majestics that have been pulled so far. But I have not seen images of that, so I don't know. That would be pretty cool to see, though. Yeah, I haven't seen any images. I feel like if that's out there, that that's got to be the best one that I know of because I I haven't heard about Luminaris, which would seem like another high demand one. What are so Luminaris is a is a majestic weapon. Were there other majestic weapons in Monarch, or was it just Luminaris? Uh, so there's four. Right? So it was Hexagore, Luminaris, Dread Scythe, and Raiden. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel like if we, I feel like if those were in the rotation, we probably would have seen at least one of them so far. But I haven't I haven't heard of any uh, gold cold hexagors, unfortunately. Or fortunately, yeah. <laughs> I, <don't get> it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's unfortunate if you pull the hexagor. It's great if you pull the luminaris. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I have seen some of the tails ones at the very least a Voltaire, but I think you're right. No monarch ones, as far as I know. So we've we've seen the Voltaire. I haven't seen Winter's Whale, and I haven't seen Duskblade. It would make sense in my mind if they left out Duskblade because it was banned. Because it's like a curated list, right? So, like, it would make sense if they yeah. left out Duskblade. But you know, a Cold Winter's Whale would be cool. Yeah, that would be sweet, for sure. So, you, you mentioned uh, possibly swapping off a Prism. You think that's what you're going to do for the next weekend's ProQuest? Um, I mean, I think it's a possibility. I, I started... I've played in four so far. So, the first one I lost in the top eight on a Starvo. And I kind of want to play Viscera at some point. That's kind of the last big hero I haven't touched. Um, but I don't know. I, I might have to lose one with Prism before I actually switch off. <laughs> That's fair. You just got to just got to get all your ducks sorted before uh, before the Pro Tour, so that you can take that one down. Uh, that's. Uh, I think uh, I've been running pretty hot, to be honest. I think 
these last two finals, especially. It's my record is deceptive. <laughs> we uh we played in Swiss of this last one too, uh, in round two, and I kind of I kind of high rolled you in Swiss, and then then you got me back in in finals. So can't have t- too hard of feelings there. I mean, I think um, honestly, I wasn't looking forward to our finals. I I thought your plan was just a lot better than mine after we played in the Swiss. So I was like, man, this that game was not close at all. Like that was the least close person Mira I've played this season. And um I I guess the matchup can go that way sometimes. It's a little snowbally, but I kinda thought it was happening again in the finals. I'm not sure what your thoughts are looking back, but you had a pretty commanding forward state in terms of auras before it kind of started to stabilize. I think there was there was one key turn where I didn't have a yellow and I didn't I had a Genesis out, but you broke it, so I didn't get to uh, readjust my hand with it. So I think I think that was like one key turn that was a big turning point where I only got to do one thing, and that was the turn where I like pitched a blue and came in with a herald, and it had go again from me having an ondu out, but then I like attacked with an aura. And then tried to attack with the second one, and you were like, "You don't have an action point." And I was like, "Oh yeah, right. I don't have a yellow here." <laughs> yeah, I should did that in the first tournament we played, like in my semifinals match. I did the same thing where like I tried to get too cute with the ode out, and like I pitched a blue, attacked with a herald, and then attacked with an aura, and my opponent's like, "Okay, like it's it's my turn now." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me. It's my action point now. Give it here. <laughs> That's 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 too good. I like that. <laughs> um, so I've got a couple uh, rapid fire questions that I'm going to shoot at you. Just some some flesh and blood related questions. Uh, whenever you're ready. Yeah, go for it. What is your favorite hero? Uh, Viscera. What is your favorite weapon? Favorite weapon. Uh, sorry, no, it's supposed to be rapid fire. Raiden, <laughs> probably. Raiden. Okay. What's your favorite new Everfest card? Uh, Shimmers of Steel slash Silver. <laughs> Shimmers of Steel. <laughs> What's your favorite place you've ever attended a tournament at? Doesn't have to be Flesh and Blood. Uh, it's probably Orlando, but for a Magic tournament. Sure, Orlando's nice. Um, what is your? Who's your favorite content creator? Can't say me. Are you sure? <laughs> um. <laughs> I'll go with uh, Team Covenant because they're the ones that got me into the game. Heck yeah. Team Covenant's doing great stuff. They got a lot of my friends into the game too. Uh, what is your favorite card in the game? Uh, it's probably Sonata Arcanics. Sonata Arcanics. A lot of, uh, lot of Runeblade answers, yeah. I could definitely see the Viscerai coming out next weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what I played a lot last year. So it's, it's always on the docket. Yeah, and it just got a bunch of cool new stuff in Everfest too. A lot of a lot of the classes that are developing into the meta are here, I think, because they got a lot of good stuff in Everfest when some of the classes didn't get that great of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at the Rune Blade like spoiler section of Everfest and it's just you can rename it to the Viscerai spoiler section. <laughs> the playable, 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 play yeah. Um yeah, I think I think Everfest gave us a lot of a lot of cool tools and especially with a lot of people shifting over to Prism, I think Viscera is a, a really good really good choice for the last week of ProQuest to just make sure that you have a uh, a good matchup into a lot of games. What are your thoughts as a Viscera and a Prism player on that matchup? Uh so to me it seems very Viscera favored. I mean Pr- Prism's a good deck, so it's not gonna be like 90 10 or anything like that but i feel like most of the viscerize where i win it's either i feel like i higher rolled them or like i can see somewhere where they messed up and uh, i walk away from the game like i I didn't i shouldn't have walked out with a win on this one you know sure Um, but i feel like that's a combination of rune blade and viscerize some of the harder decks to play right now and then prism is probably one of the harder decks to play against because it makes you make weird choices um so it's a, no bashing on anyone but to me the matchup feels pretty viscera favored 
Yeah, I could I could see that. Um, like with Viserai, the floor is really low. A not a not great player can play that deck very stumbly or like make suboptimal plays and still do okay, but not great. But a great Viserai player is just very very good at Viserai. So yeah, I, I feel you. Yeah, but, I think it's a. Uh... You just want the Starvos to take them all out if you're playing Prism. Starvos take coming. out all the Viscerize. Prism takes out all the Starvos. Um, talking back again about Prism, you. So I I didn't start picking up Prism until uh, after you had beat me in top eight, and I was like, maybe it's time for me to play the villain, as Dozer calls it. It's time to start playing Prism, and so I started picking up the deck and learning some of the lines and we put in a lot of testing with my team shout out to seal team lotus great group of people great testing team and i'm very glad to be a part of that um but i had never played prism before that and it was very very big struggle at first trying to find some of the lines and how to play some of the matchups but uh since i picked it up and did a bunch of testing you were the first prism mirror that i ever lost oh man that's I mean, that's amazing on your end. I think, I don't know. I'm trying to think back. I've lost, so I lost three games total in those three pro quests, and two of them were prison mirrors. So one to you in the Swiss and one to someone on Saturday. I, I mean, my area is very heavily like prism infested, and to this day, I don't exactly understand what's important in the mirror. Like, I feel like the games are just, so dynamic i think a lot of this this new prism build with all the auras can be dynamic like in a lot of different matchups you can just establish if you are needing to go heralds here or if you are needing to go aggro you can just like play auras and make that a game plan i think it's a lot about evaluating the game state and what your opponent's doing and what you think they're going to plan to do going forward in the game and then trying to make things line up. It's also a lot about like looking at your hand and seeing, can I drop two auras here? Can I drop a Herald and be fine? Herald plus aura. And just like looking at what you have the potential to do. Yeah. I feel like the big hangout point is with the blue auras specifically is every turn you have to decide, am I going to kill my opponent's aura or play my own blue aura? Cause I think most of the time you can't do both, right? Outside of Crown or some weird tech cards. Yeah. And it kind of uh, it makes those snowball sometimes. Um, but I don't know. It's, I'm still figuring it out as I go. That's fair. You and me both. <laughs> Crown has been one of my favorite cards for the mirror so far. I have killed two people with just going and like crowning a thing, killing them. Like crown and a pierce reality for the last two points of damage. Yeah, so I was using Sunday to test crown. That was the first one I played it because I'm I'm on vestige. I, I think it's really good in the tunic build, and it seems 100 percent correct in the mirror if you're there. I think after that tournament, I'm just going back to Halo in the mirror if I'm on vestige. I think the on-demand access to tome might be too important, but. I, I see why it's powerful after playing with the card. Yeah. Um, personally, I the 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 floor on Tome is like very bad, but the ceiling on it's very high. So I I didn't like having another another card in my deck that didn't block and sometimes had a very very bad floor where you had to do a bunch of setup. Especially for the mirror, it makes things kind of awkward. So I opted not to go with the vestige build. I just did the Tudic Skullcap base. And I think that's where I am with Prism going forward. But a lot of people don't share that opinion. Uh, what are your thoughts on playing Vestige plus Halo over Tunic Cap? Yeah. Um, so I started there because when I played Prism and Monarch, I thought it was strictly correct at the time. I don't know that it is anymore or really even that it was back then. But I, I think for me... I, I felt like with some of my bad matchups, Tome gave me access to like a plan to have one really explosive turn that can kind of snowball the game the way Prism does. 
um, and kind of like matchups like this, right? I I think that's helped me have some success, but I don't know. I, I think it is worse against Starvo personally, and you kind of have to pick your poison to some extent. Sure. Uh, I really like the way the Starvo matchup plays out now, where you just like set a set a big defense reaction in your arsenal and try to apply some pressure and mitigate some of theirs until it matters with an on hit, and then just swing the game. You put them in like an awkward spot where they have to block every turn, and then they're like never starvoing you again. Yeah, no, I agree. I I saw your list, and it to me it looks so much better in the starvo than mine is. Like, I, I feel like I'm deck building like a maniac. I only have soul shield and zero other defense reactions in my deck, and so like once they start starvoing you, there's kind of like no way to stop it. Like you're just gonna leak a ton of damage. Um. But, you know, for people who build their decks rationally, you can play unmovable, and that's not, like, a problem. <laughs> I also I also really liked the... So I was playing 3-sync and 1-fate for scene. Or, yeah, 3-sync, 1-fate for scene. Uh, the syncs are, like, for your Viscerai matchup, and the fate for scene comes in with the syncs uh, versus chain, because you just, like, turtle up and fatigue them. Uh, it's I think that's the scariest way to play the chain matchup. I had never played against chain as prism before that event and that was my one loss in swiss and so because i was already locked at 4-0 i just decided to try a different route and try to just smack them down with heralds that was not the play <laughs> yeah so i played chain once that event i ended up winning and i had to play the heralds plan right because i like you said a bunch of my cards don't block and i don't have the d reacts so i i think tome kind of gives you the option to high roll there too but overall that's probably a worse plan or at least not as consistent of a plan so they're going to leak a, bit, a little bit of damage even if they do try to block and mitigate some so you're more likely to get a herald in your soul and in your build when you have vestige active it's a little less scary playing the tome um i think i think what i figured out afterwards though is to just side out a bunch of the auras and just put in a bunch of three blocks and defense reacts and everything and just block, 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 block. Yeah, I think that's probably the highest like win rate way to play the chain matchup. This is, and if you build your deck to do that, I think you should every time. If, again, you're building like a maniac, just try to high roll them and hope it works out. I roll Tome, pull the slot machine, bring the ding, 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 ding. I think, uh, like, rationalizing this out loud makes me realize I need to go play the lottery after winning all these higher roll matchups. <laughs> You're just like, all right, well, uh, is, there a, is there a ticket called Prism? I'm just going to buy all those, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Million dollars? Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, need, to, uh, need this hero doesn't never living legend out so I can... Just try to high roll my way through uh, flesh and blood. <laughs> I roll through flesh and blood. Well, even if it does living legend, you'll get a, a new light illusionist. So, that's true. I guess the prism specializations aren't that great. Arclight so, Sentinel's a hell of a card. That's that's true. But like <laughs> I always think Air Edition's the other one, and it's not. It's like the weird anti chain card. Yeah, the Herald of Judgment. And yeah. the awkward part about that card is I just don't think it's good against chain. They just like, you have to have two. They throw Husk in front of the first one, so it doesn't matter. And then the second one, they just like block two cards. So you get two cards out of their hand, but it's their choice. Yeah, it's it's not great. It, or, it's definitely a lot worse in play than it is on paper, I guess. Yeah. But like, on that was one of the one of the things. You played against um, one of my friends, Mara, in the semifinals. And she was dead set on playing Herald of Judgment for the chain matchup. And I finally convinced her to cut it from the deck, and then she played against Chain in the quarters, and I told her, I think you just need to fatigue. And that that's why I came over and talked to you. We were talking about like how to play the how to play the chain matchup and uh decided on on just like block out fatigue um with the way my list was constructed. And cause cause that was my loss in Swiss. And I'd never played it before, and the dude was in top eight. I I thought I might have been playing him round one. Uh, but I was way higher in the in the bracket than I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Herald of Judgment's going to do a 
the same thing in that matchup as any other Herald, and it's just block for three or be a yellow pitch. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, uh, you're right. It works better on paper than it does in play. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current triangle meta that we're in? Uh, so I think just like in terms of like, do I like it or what are my thoughts on all the heroes? Do like you do you like it? Do you think it's uh, a sign of a healthy meta that we have three big top decks? Um, just like in general, what are what are your thoughts on being in a triangle meta and the decks in the triangle meta? I've heard a lot of people say that it's unhealthy, um, which, like in my opinion, I think it's a, like the healthiest format we've had so far because it's not a one deck dominant format. So, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that's true. I think I realized today, like. I think in terms of number of heroes viable, it's probably more healthy than any other format I've played in. I think what's happening is the games don't feel great sometimes. I think most games involving like the you know casino style Starvo build, regardless of who wins, it doesn't feel that good on either side. And I think that's what's influencing people. Um, in terms of the triangle. I don't I don't mind that. I think Viscera has actually really been underperforming though, and I'm almost wondering a little if it's more of a two deck format than I thought it was. Just with um, just the numbers that I saw on the main yeah, you know, website. Prism and Starvo are converting a lot better than at least any one individual rune blade is. Do you think that's because the Rune Blades aren't a, aren't a top contender, or do you think that's just because there's a lot of people playing Rune Blade and not knowing some of the smaller interactions? I, I think it's probably more of the latter would be my guess. Um, I feel like even though Rune Blade has been good pretty much the whole time I've been playing the game, it was the like chain was kind of a face roll deck for in most matchups, so like. You didn't, you didn't need to, like, I was a chain player. I'm, I'm willing to admit that. Um, and then we played, like, Redline Briar, which, again, a sequencing heavy deck, but, like, once you figure it out, there wasn't a lot going on. And I think Viscera is kind of the first one that your cards actually need to add up to more than the sum of their parts. And there's a lot of, you know, lines going on with Creepers. And I don't know. I, I think as the season progresses they'll probably do better would be my guess yeah that's that's fair i uh i think i agree with you on all parts there and uh i myself was also a dirty chain player and a savage lightning briar player were you uh were you playing at the u.s nationals this year or this past year i did so i um i played viscerai um to be honest i, ta- I kind of tanked my tournament in the draft portion but like no. I had figured out Viscerai was okay, but I hadn't figured out that, like, you need to do the whole OTK thing. Like, I was kind of just trying to race Briars, and it was probably, like, 50-50-ish, but super high variance, and, I don't know, the the plan wasn't that solid. The the hero was there, but the plan, the plan was uh, somewhere somewhere a little bit behind. (laughs) Yeah, like, I'd even, like, I don't know, looking back, it, the whole testing process was so questionable. It's like, I'd slowly figure out you need all the defense reactions, but, like, never in my mind did it click that, like, you didn't have to just play all the cards in your hand every turn. You could, you know, build up 20 or a chance and kill them. <laughs> Wait, I can just, I can just block and make these spicy circles and then fling spicy circles at you. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's so. Like, I, I started in Monarch, and you know, during Monarch, I feel like Mistra was kind of like a meme hero, and then they started to pick up some with Thorn and you know Creepers, um, but like no one had ever seriously played OTK Mistra in my area, so I, I thought it was kind of a joke deck, and never even tested it. I remember, I remember the same thing crossing my mind because when when we were still getting like first getting into the game it was around the monarch time too and one of my friends had saw a deck tech for an otk viscerai and he's like i kind of want to try this meme deck and so we played a bunch into it and it was just not great and so it was pretty funny 
like watching this uh watching this comparison of how viscerai went from just being one of the worst decks to being one of the best decks and it was it was just kind of funny you know yeah i mean i think the only time i'd really seen it was the devastation series they ran where he was playing the like the really cutesy like otk viscerai deck yeah like, <laughs> oh, that, that's like hilarious like it seems horrible but i really like what's going on but yeah, never, never even crossed my mind to try to rebuild that. Yeah, yep. I remember during RTN season, we had like ran into a couple of OTK Viscerais, and it was always just kind of, kind of roll them and move on, and like not even think of, not even think twice about it. And then as soon as Tales of Aria came out, and people started playing Viscerai because of Creepers and Rosetta Thorn. I was like, wait a minute, that's the meme hero. What are you what are you doing? And then Everfest came out and it was just like, Whoa, this is like real, this is really powerful, and now we have to start thinking about this hero. Because if you look if you look at Viscerai, the hero power is like very powerful, but it was just harder to make use of before. And now you just get to have these tempo turns with Mauve Skies into an actual threat and be like, all right, damage, damage, damage. So even if you're just going like mid-range or aggro like mauve into shrill form into minimum sword you you can just pitch a blue to play all these two drop threats plus a sword and it's kind of scary yeah i mean i think if starvo didn't exist and it's all conjecture because maybe something else would take that place i feel like we'd be in closer to a one deck format where viscerai would just be rolling a lot of people the new cards are really good and that deck is i feel like faster Goldfishing than most decks in the format are. Yeah, the uh, the punishing hands for Viscerai are very punishing, though. So it's you have to you have to figure out a lot about how to take care of the red hands and turn them into something. And I think that's that's like the hardest part about the deck is what do I do if I just draw all four reds and no non attacks or any of those kind of hands and trying to make those work? Just do a little setup. Do I want to arsenal? Do I want to smack for a little bit? Like, what, what am I doing with these hands? Blocking? That's true. He's got, like, Bolton Syndrome to a degree, where it's, like, highly synergistic hero, and his bad hands are functionally unplayable. That is that is fair. So uh, so you mentioned picking up around Monarch. What, uh, what was it that drew you into the game? Um, so I saw a team... Covenant playing it, and I think what really caused me to pull the trigger was when they started announcing their first series of like four callings in the US. Like, I'd played Magic semi competitively before, and yeah, you know, because of COVID, it had been a long time, so I was kind of looking to jump back into something. And because the stars just kind of aligned on the timing, and you know, I bought some Blitz decks, came home, played it, and immediately bought like three cases that night and just dove into it going head first diving in that i wish i could say my experience was different but i literally did the same thing blitz decks into cases <laughs> yeah so like this was pretty fun i should spend yeah, thousands of dollars now <laughs> it's it's time <laughs> just yeah. shoveling magic cards into a into a furnace to fuel my flesh and blood addiction <laughs> uh, that's literally what happened i looked i was like oh well, i'm never gonna get to play a lot of these magic cards again like Shipped them all off. It got a couple thousand dollars. Turned it all into flesh and blood, and here I am. Mine was like, post a binder of masterpieces. Who wants these? I want flesh and blood stuff. And I found somebody who would just like trade me cases and cases and cases of flesh and blood. Like, all right, well now I have every card in the game. All right, I guess I'm set. Time to play this game now. <laughs> yes, no. I mean, now we're stuck, right? Like, it, there's no like turning a back. Yeah, <laughs> there's no turning back. We're going to the pro tour. We can't just be like, ah, uh, no, pro tour, fake game. Nobody plays this game. Flesh and blood scam investor game. Yes, now I need it to succeed. So in 20 years, I can be like, like all the the boomers I currently know, where it's like, I was back on pro tour one, yeah. Yeah. Back when Prism was a broken hero. <laughs> Back when Prism was a broken hero, and they're just like, what are you talking about, old man? We're playing Levia now, like the like, real men. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Back in my day, Levia wasn't great. 
<laughs> no, Bloody is the best deck, strictly better than everything else. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think I need to play long enough to see that world. <laughs> if nothing else, I want to live to see that one. <laughs> I think it's really cool that we're going to be able to say that we are a part of the first ever Flesh and Blood Pro Tour. And I'm really excited to see how that pans out. They've already announced that there's going to be a lot of cool stuff for people who show up and a lot of cool stuff for people who are participating, especially. I'd imagine that there's going to be probably some gift package like Magic did, where it's like, backpack a play mat a deck box a lanyard something like that where it's just stapled with the lss logo and welcome to pro tour one or whatever something like that and i think it'll be really cool to have those pieces of history and be a part of something that i think is going to grow and continue to take off yeah no, i totally agree i mean by the by the time i started playing magic it was a very well established game so being here in the beginning and seeing how much support LSS has for their competitive scene is awesome. Yeah, it's it's great because they're they're actually putting care into it and saying, hey, here's a pro tour, here's a national championships, here's a clear path to get from ladder step one to ladder step two to ladder step three. We're shoveling into these callings. These big companies are taking over and actually running good events. And it's really cool to see all that shape out in front of us. And like I wasn't even alive whenever Magic started doing that. So I, I have no concept of what that would have looked like then, but I'm glad to be here and be a part of seeing everything grow now with this with this game that I personally enjoy playing more than Magic. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's, it scratches the competitive itch in a, a really good way. So I think if that's the experience you're looking for, this is, I don't know, it's an awesome game. I don't regret getting into it at all. Yep, I have I have no regrets on my end either. Um, with that, I think we are going to wrap up today's episode of the podcast. Do you have any final remarks uh, about the game or about your experience or anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, I'd like to yeah you know, give my slops to the the brute community in general. Stop playing brute. It's a <laughs> very very toxic anti prison deck. But other than that, no, I appreciate you having me on one. This is a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for beating me in the finals. <laughs> yeah, thanks Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. I uh, I know I caught you at the end, like, as we were finishing up. I was like, hey, what are you doing Tuesday? And you gave me this weird look. You're like, what What, is, what does this guy want? <laughs> I don't know if we're hanging out on Tuesday. Or, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to go get a drink, record a pot. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Oh, hey, checking out. That'll be due back next Thursday. I'll see you there.